In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can easily create a seamless geometric pattern and then at the end show you how you can add uh, slight tweaks to it to create a potentially infinite number of uh, pattern variations. So to get started, we are going to use our Bezier tool to create a vertical and horizontal line here so uh, when you click and hold down shift and click a second time you'll get uh, a line constrained perfectly vertical uh, once that's done go ahead and select change to your pick tool and we'll just click the line again so we get our rotation icons and we'll click hold down control and rotate 90 degrees and once you have it there if you right click you will get a duplicate object of your original line. Uh, they should be perfectly aligned uh, vertically and horizontally, but in case they're not, you can select both and go to your Align and Distribute Docker and just click the uh, Align Center Horizontally and Align Center Vertically buttons just to double check. Uh, once that's done, we're going to grab our rectangle tool and we're going to click, hold down control and drag out a circle about you want it so that it doesn't go past the ends of the uh, the lines here. Uh, once you have your square go ahead and make sure it's selected then select the horizontal line and we're going to use our align tools here and we're going to align to the top we're going to deselect reselect the the square and the vertical line this time and we're going to align to our right we want the the square to be butted up right at the center point here of our kind of crosshair quadrant setup once that's done we are going to use our rectangle tool again and we're just going to create uh, a rectangle object that goes beyond the edge of our square and we're just going to uh, click the make sure the, the rectangle that you just created is selected first then select the square and we're going to align the centers again vertically and horizontally so it's perfectly centered. Now the the width of this rectangle will vary depending on how big you made your original square and set up here. Um, so kind of use your best judgment in how kind of thick you want it in terms of what I'm displaying here. Uh, once you have that we're just going to do the same process we did that we did for the crosshairs here. And we're going to select the rectangle and we're going to rotate 90 degrees horizontally uh, and get a duplicate object. The next thing we want to do is take the vertical object rectangle here and we're going to use our contour tool and we're just going to kind of create a, a contour that has some a, a good gap uh, between the two here two lines uh, so once you have it roughly looking like this you can hit control K on your keyboard to separate the, the new contour object from the rectangle and what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, blue object here and we're going to trim this horizontal rectangle so select the blue object then your horizontal rectangle and up at the top we're going to use the trim pathfinder tool or button to delete out that section of the the horizontal uh, rectangle once that's done you can delete that uh, the blue rectangle contour object. We won't need it anymore. 
Uh, so once you have that done, we're going to grab both uh, objects here, and we're just going to use the Combine Pathfinder button here. So now there's one shape. You can deselect, then select the square, then select the uh, new object again. This time we want to uh, use our Intersect Pathfinder button. That'll create just a, a new object inside the bounds of the, the square. Once you have that, you can select the original object and delete that out. Switch this back to gray. Uh, once that's done, what we're going to do is deselect everything, and we're going to select our two lines here, the vertical and horizontal lines, and we're going to combine that into one object because we're going we're going to be using this uh, crosshair element as our rotation point because it's has it centered. Um, so, we're going to select the, the new uh, geometric object here, then select our crosshair, and then we're going to click on it again to get our rotation icons, and we're just going to rotate 90 degrees and right click before you let go to get a duplicate of both of the, the objects here. You don't need to worry about the fact that the crosshair duplicates too. It's just, it's not going to matter. So, uh, with the object still selected, if we hit Control R on our keyboard, it will duplicate the last command or the last action. So, we'll want to do that two times to get a perfect rotation around uh, with four separate objects here. The next thing we want to do is we're going to select all four of these geometric objects and we're going to use the weld pathfinder button here to combine them all into one shape and if you switch to your shape tool um, it's good practice to get rid of these extra nodes that are created when you weld objects that are perfectly aligned so we're just going to select them, delete them, like so. And I like to select everything since they're straight lines. And then right click on them and click to line. And that just gets rid of the any Bezier handles. Um, just good practice. So with that done, we're going to select the object, select one of the crosshairs, and we'll just duplicate over a new new object to work from, just so we have our original intact. And what we're going to do is select the object, and we're going to rotate 45 degrees. The next thing we want to do is grab our... Uh, actually first before we do that, we're going to turn on our snap. So if you go up to view, down to snap to, we want to snap to objects. Next, we're going to grab our rectangle tool. And what we're going to do is snap to this node and this node to create a square on those dimensions. So if you click, hold down control, and snap to the bottom node here. It should be perfectly aligned on those corners there. Uh, once that's done, um, we're going to select the, the new square, select the crosshair, and we're going to align the vertical and horizontal centers again. This should align perfectly along the, the uh, corner points here on each side. Uh, with that done, we are going to select the, the square and the rotated uh, geometric object here, and we're going to intersect that now. 
And now we can select the original object, delete that out. We can now we have our uh, see, uh, our geometric pattern ready for uh, to create a seamless pattern. Uh, so with that done, I'm going to turn off my snaps because I won't need them. Uh, so I'm just going to grab and duplicate the object over here. I'm going to change the dimensions of the the pattern to one inch. And using the transformations uh, docker, I'm going to on the x-axis change it to one inch, and I'll do five copies. Apply that, and I'll do this again. This time a negative one on the y-axis, and we get our pattern. We'll remove the the stroke just for so we can see it better. Uh, but you can see how quickly you can get a seamless geometric pattern using this method. So that would that's one the just the standard uh, process. Now we can take this uh, this setup here. We'll grab everything and just duplicate over a copy, and we will just do some quick uh, additions to create a variation. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a new rectangle that has a, roughly the same type of thickness as these objects. I'm just going to rotate 45 degrees and I'll select my square and I'll align the, the centers again. Uh, with that done, I'm going to duplicate an object uh, to the other side. You can either click and rotate or you can also hit the plus key to duplicate and just mirror, use the mirror ver uh, horizontally buttons here. Um, with that done, I'm going to select one of the, the two uh, new rectangle objects. I'm going to contour out a trim object from that. I'm also going to do that with the original uh, geometric object. So we have two trim tools essentially. So first thing I'm going to do is take the contour from the new rectangle, trim uh, the second copy, and I'll just go ahead and delete that, and then take these two uh, rectangle objects, and I will combine them into one, and then I'll take this trim object, or contour object, and trim the new rectangles again. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and delete that. The last thing we need to do is select our square and then select the new uh, geometric object and we'll use the intersect pathfinder again and then delete the original. So now we have a basically a new geometric variation. So we'll select both. Uh, duplicate over an object and we'll combine them into one and I'm going to change the dimensions again to one inch and using the transformations again we'll get our pattern so so you can see how you can get a number of variations on a single pattern just by adding little additions. You can uh, create an infinite number essentially um, for whatever purposes you might need. 
uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope uh, some of these techniques were informative and allow you to create the type of pattern you're looking for. If you haven't, please haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That would help out immensely. Uh, also, liking and sharing the the videos also helps. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.